What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another very special episode of the Burnout Brighter podcast. My name is Matt. I'll be your host for this evening's events. I'm joined, as always, by my wonderfully lovely co-host, Destiny. Hey! And today, I am incredibly excited to be talking to someone who genuinely makes an impact every single day and works with people to make sure that their geekiness can be something that they can use for their therapy. I'm joined by Dr. Anthony Bean from Geek Therapeutics. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. It's uh, We love talking about this stuff, as you can imagine, with our <laughs> clients. <laughs> yeah, I can totally imagine. So to, but before we get into the nitty gritty of everything, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about Geek Therapeutics? Absolutely. So I am Dr. Anthony Bean. I'm a licensed psychologist and I practice in the state of Texas. I, let's see, I run four different businesses, uh, one called the Jules wow. Project, which is a nonprofit uh, here in Texas, where wow. we we basically take all sorts of different insurances and everything else that we possibly can to help out the community and give them adequate services, whether it is psychological testing, specialized therapy, or, or something else that they potentially might need, such as case consultation or even case management. That's so that's great. one of them. I know, it's mm-hmm. super fun. Yeah, it's, it's, it's no, a blast that's amazing. Every day. We, we try to make sure that we we really strike a, the uh, while the iron's hot and help out as much as we possibly can because it's what we're trained to do and it's also really important that the community is there like we there's such a massive need I don't know why people don't just do more of this like it's it's fun it's <laughs> exciting but it's also on occasion tiring but <laughs> but they're fun as anything is right yeah I, was say, I think that's amazing because I know a lot of people like don't go for help because they just don't have the funds. They don't know how to like Mm -hmm. work their insurance. So I think that's incredible that you're doing that. We'll, we'll help you work your insurance even too. I have, we, we literally have hired staff. We take all the Medicaid's in the area plus stuff that are out of County, out of the state. That's incredible. And so, and so if people need need help, we are are there to be like, cool, let's help you find these these services. Let's help you get this stuff taken care of. And let's help you get in here so we can get it taken care of for you and, and find the right way to get you ha- um, handled. But also make sure that you find the right match for what your needs are, whether it's us or someone else. That makes me want to cry. <laughs> I, I know, know it's why. just like, we we've talked we've talked to a lot of incredible people on the show and it's just yeah. like it's it's so nice um and not to say that other people aren't making meaningful change it's just that like to be so very much in it you know what if that makes sense it's just it's incredible so I mean that's only one business you said you run four that, that, right, that's only right. one sorry, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that's 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 perfectly fine we we love doing what we do my wife's actually the, the clinical director she's a licensed psychologist too and she's one of the most amazing people I've ever met in my uh, my life and she wouldn't be possible to do it without her in, in that one as well um, I have a private practice on the side as well where I do more specialized type stuff let's say court stuff or more uh, uh, I identified geek and cultural uh, phenomenons of what I'm going to call it with my clients. Uh, and <laughs> then there is geek therapeutics where we train professionals on how to use geek therapy in, in their life, in their world. And so we we're actually worldwide now. Yeah. We have people in, in other countries doing a whole bunch of other things and we are, are collaborating with a whole bunch of different uh, community-based organizations to to really bring this uh, home and engage ourselves wow. uh, and the clients around us as well. And so while we train uh, clinicians in the, the basics of geek therapy and a little bit more uh, nuanced stuff, so say, for instance, this year has been very heavy with um, the MCU and how do we use these different characters and mm-hmm. in, in therapeutic uh, connotations. We've done some ABA therapy uh, based uh, practices, especially with uh, those who might be on the autism spectrum, because I'll tell you the one thing down here in the South is they those on the autism spectrum get hit hard by the the legal system and they get caught up in it very, very quickly. And it's because they don't understand what is socially acceptable for certain things and socially not. And so they usually get hit with um, a sexual assault or a sexual uh, deviancy uh, charge. And so we were like, we need to get clinicians on board with this. And we need to to say like, this is just a misdiagnosis. This is something that we need to, to work out. We need to, yes, they shouldn't be doing that. They need some sort of, 
reformation is the terrible word is what they used. Right. Texas. Yeah. Mm. Terrible word. Um, but they, <laughs> they need guidance on, on what is right, what is wrong, how do we do this? And then they shouldn't be labeled as, as a sex offender or anything like that because it just carries through them um, down the line. And there's not enough people to get them psych tested to, to help out in that right. ca- capacity. So that's just one of the sets of our training that are happening. I mean, we've stuff on RPGs. We just opened up our therapeutic game master earlier this year. We're filling up cohort 13 right now. Uh, it's, it's going absolutely phenomenally awesome. Uh, we, we have people from all over the world actually participating in that one and, uh, other organizations, I'm not allowed to say their name, but they're, they're bigger than (laughs) us and they're, they're, they're definitely very much, uh, nationwide and worldwide, if not are involved in kind of what we are, what we're doing and what they're doing and they're getting their trainings through us. We, we also have tons of other programs coming uh, down the line, certificate programs versus more additional trainings. We're already booked over halfway in ne- wow. into next year with trainings from professionals uh, because we very much believe that, yes, we use geek culture. We use geek therapy to help our clients. However, right. I may not know as much about, let's say, I'm going to just throw one that I, I it's not true, uh, Batman and Bruce <laughs> Wayne and, and the Joker and things like that. Um, I'm just using that as an example. Example. Um, but to to be able to utilize that story, that that narrative journey with a client, right. uh, to be able to, to train people in in that capacity is very very important. And so we we use all these different ideas to to manage that, and we have a ton of people in the training process. Uh, we are doing amazing amazing things. And we're about to launch a Kickstarter. You guys are probably Woo! one of the first people to to kind of know it. That'll that'll get, kind of get going. I was supposed to announce <gasps> it this week. It didn't happen because the week got away from me. But it's going to start in as things do, right? First. And oh my god, are, as things always do. Uh, and we're we're right. doing some some really fun stuff. It's going to be it's going to be crazy. They're going to be little what we call our pouches of potential. And uh, they're going to be oh, little dice bags. Oh, they're not little, but they're they're, they're, they're pretty <laughs> so right. Cool. Right. We had to get around D and D's copyright of uh, bags of gold. <laughs> and so we're like pouches of potential. Oh. This is this is it. And so there's going to be four different colors of that one, and then there's going to be a whole bunch of add-ons of uh, merch type stuff of dice towers, of dice holders, dice vaults, wooden, um, and five different colors. There's dice uh, rollers. Uh, there's going to be gemstone dice. It's it's a massive undertaking, and we are just so close to being able to announce it and then do some crazy stuff with it. I'm uh, excited. But it's going to go oh, nuts. That is awesome. I also love the name pouches of, pouches of potential. Pouches of potential. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. That's so cool. Before you, you, wait, wait till you oh, sorry, even see like no, no, I was going to say wait till you even see how I've labeled them in the Kickstarter. It's like uh. a pinch of potential. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god and then like uh the classic uh all your base belong to me it's like all your pouches belong to me and i'm oh like yep god. here it is this is I what love we're the gonna creativity do. behind it and yes the like complete geek culture like anybody who's into video games or D or anything is going to be like super psyched yeah oh yeah yeah no, we we love doing that stuff and the last one which is not as exciting as a publishing company um, no, oh exciting. no no big deal just writing yeah, about yeah. Zelda, the psychology of zelda not a big deal at once no, whatsoever that's absolutely <laughs> oh my god no all of, congratulations on well, thank all of you. that we, it would well it wouldn't be possible without a geeks or air all of us being able to be like yeah. yeah let's talk about this let's go into this uh we we very much rely on the community to help drive us uh, a little bit and the community is doing fantastic with with that like I'll give you an example. They don't even know that we're doing Psycho Pokemon yet. And uh, we're about halfway through with, with getting that. And my God, they're, it's going to blow people's yeah, minds in the best is. way. <laughs> wow. Look I'm in. Matt's face. Yeah, I love Pokemon. So I'm in. Um, that's incredible. I, I'm so excited to see the Kickstarter. And I mean, Pouches of Potential and everything about it is so cool. And just the amount of work you do is staggering. It's just incredible. Um, but before we get even further into that, I have to ask, because we always like to ask uh, you know, our first time guests, <laughs> about a game that matters to them, about a game that made an impact for them or, you know, helped get them through a difficult mental health period. Hi, buddy. Uh, you can introduce yeah. your baby. Like it's, you want to introduce these fine. guys? Yes. All right, come here, buddy. Come here. This guy is August, and I'm going to put the headset on him so he can hear. You want to say hi to them? Hello. August, do you have a Spider-Man? <laughs> is that <laughs> Spider-Man? Yes, yeah, Spider-Man. Oh, he's so that? cute. <clears throat> I this like looks, your glasses. This you, looks you just like you. 
Yeah. Is that you? Is that you yeah. under there? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have so an cute. August action figure. That's incredible. <laughs> I mean, Spider Man. We don't tell anybody, right? Shh. Undercover. Oh, you're four. Four? You're four? <gasps> wow. Wow. You're a big boy. <laughs> mm-hmm. I go to mm-hmm. elementary school. Great you go to man. elementary Great school? Part. Do you like yeah. it? Uh, yeah. Oh What's your goodness. favorite part? What's your most favorite part? Uh, I mm. get a walk there. <gasps> really? Really? That's wow. so cool. Good job. Oh, we're so proud of you. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Spider-Man has to be really smart, yeah, and I can right, tell. Right? You're right? really smart. Right? Yeah. Yeah, you are. You're very <laughs> smart. We know. All right, He's buddy. So we'll, see you. we'll see you next time. Keep being Spider-Man. See you soon. E- I got eagle eyes. Oh, you have eagle eyes. Really? Yeah. Mommy. I don't I don't know. If you have eagle eyes, how many fingers do am I holding? Do you see? Yeah. How many? How many? <gasps> you do have Whoa. eagle eyes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's so, so awesome. Smart. So cute. Well, it was really nice meeting you. you. Go back to bed. Okay. Have a good sleep, buddy. Okay. Bye. Okay, this is power. <laughs> All right, buddy. You ready to exchange power? Right. So Come here, buddy. Let's, let's do this. It reminded me of that newscaster Pokemon. when he was trying to give the right? newscast, yeah. and like his daughter the, comes walking. Just walking in, <laughs> he just walks on in like she owns the place, yeah. and then the stroller comes right on through, and, then the and just like and the wife, the wife's like, "Oh crap!" Yeah, and he tries to pull it, pull on through, and slam the door shut. Yeah, that was one of the best moments ever. Yeah, he he yeah. is adorable. He, he is fantastic. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> so cute you know i want to know like even though we're not professionals like what we can do to help the community like where we are yeah so i'm like i can't wait to like delve more into it and just find out as much information as possible i'm very excited <gasps> he, he, he wants you guys to know that he is very much into pokemon Oh, Matt is too. I am too. I got my peak. I got my Pikachu right here. Yeah, Matt he he has Pokemon. like a three foot one. <laughs> <laughs> well, forget this one. Then I'm gonna throw this one. Out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't don't. He, it was when uh, Build a Bear was doing them, and oh I was like, gosh. we have to go. We have to go. And so we went, and we got like one of the last ones. I was like, give him all to me. Fill it as full <laughs> as you can make it. I want this thing to burst. <laughs> Oh my gosh, he's so cute. He's so he adorable. He is adorable. He likes Spider Man too, as you found out really quickly. That's right? Matt's favorite character. I have like three different suits downstairs, so I mean, yes. I'm a little bit jealous of his too. But it's <laughs> it's good. We're not going to focus on that. <laughs> All right, let's get back to it. Uh, games that matter. I wanted to ask you about a game that has made an impact for you, or one that you think is special and deserves to be talked about. It's going to, for me personally, because of the orphan archetype and everything that it did for me growing up, it's going to be Legend of Zelda. I yes, played I knew every you were gonna one say of that. them. You knew it was going to, this is the first book that we did. I knew you were going to say that. Of course. Yes. <laughs> I, I knew. Yeah, it's good. It was, it was that Pokemon also was really, really great. And uh, because it teaches you about like perseverance and grit and, and all sorts of other ideas uh, that you can find within it, helping you uh, je- uh, go through uh, different Ericsson's, Ericssonian stages, different ideas to, to manage yourself a little bit more and grow as a person in, and kind of like, whether you have to deal with the time battles or take your time, stuff like that, patience, courage, everything like mm-hmm. that, but Zelda, man, like, my God, that was my jam. Like I think I've played Ocarina of Time over a hundred times, and <laughs> without without using any of the um, without using any of the cheats or anything like that, Ooh. I can. I, my greatest claim to fame is getting and beating the entire game one hundred percent in under eight hours. Wow, wow. No, that's, that's all the that's... bottles, all the scotolas, everything. That's incredible. Nice. Yeah. I've not. That was that. when I was 23. <laughs> <laughs> so like two, three years ago, about there, right? <laughs> about four months ago, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. So, so what is it about Zelda that spoke to you so much? 
So I, I'm personally adopted, and I grew up with that. Uh, I'm going to use an internal wound as the, as the word of that one. And specifically with that, it, it kind of kids are really mean when they're when they're growing up they don't understand yeah. things like mm-hmm. that and so we'd get like oh you're adopted all that and then i still remember even in high school there was this one group of people that are like oh but your your family uh, let's let's talk about the real tony the one that the family actually wants and i'm like whoa dude like wow. they adopted wow. it's a legal thing yeah. yeah safe to say those people who used to do that they're not really doing very much with their lives right now because right. we always keep tabs. And so I feel like it kind of evened <laughs> itself out in the end um, to be able to do that. But The Legend of Zelda always works on what we call an orphan archetype. When you start off the game, you have to start from nothing. You've been orphaned by your parents, by your a superior of a fam- family member. And you have to traverse this entire terrain, this dangerous ter- uh, terrain. And it's not, and the, one of the things I really like about it, it's not a level up system. It's an a, acquirement of different objects and different tools and that is Mm -hmm. a great sense to be able to actually go and uh metaphorically talk about we have to gather tools in order to get to the next temple we have to use them in unique and specific ways in order to traverse the terrain to find the different ideas that we have to do never mind the temples themselves are amazing metaphors for what do we have to do to cleanse ourselves to be able to actually hold the power of the Triforce together to be able to to know what to to do with it. And so as we are doing something very difficult, we're we're getting sweaty, we're we're fighting monsters, we're fighting uh, different things, we're having to figure puzzles out. A temple itself mm-hmm. is a quest. In that quest, once you complete it and you clear it, you cleanse the temple. You are also, in a sense, cleansing yourself in a, in a way that you are doing something better for yourself and you're growing from that adventure. And that's that's something that we use heavily, heavily in in my uh, practice. But also the the idea of of what we can use the the, the objects within it, whether it's Navi talk holding, uh, telling us, "Hey, hey, listen up," where we're like, "Smack, get down," <laughs> um, or <laughs> or is it the the hook shot that we need to to utilize it for a, a different uh, obstacle in order to to break down a barrier or get over a gorge or find a different way of, of grabbing something closer to us. And right. So it really kind of helps to us to, to really familiarize, familiarize ourselves with who we are, but what our, our environment is and what we possibly need. Maybe we need a different tool to get past this current hurdle in our, in our life. Maybe we need to think about it at the puzzle in a different way. And we have to use it in a different manner in order to really see the, the secrets of what we get. But once we use that tool, once we figure out how to use it in different ways, we remember that we can then use it to go forward and it doesn't become any sort of difficulty or it is not anything that feels like it's overpowering or has difficult uh, meaning for us. So we've overcome it. That's incredible. Like that answer. Yeah. That was really in depth. And like, I really liked your view on it. Cause I, I don't think I've ever thought about it that way. You yeah. Know? So yeah. That was Likewise. Like we, we've heard people talk about Zelda on the, on the show before, but never in, in that light. So thank you so much for, for telling us about a game that matters to you. Cause I think that's <laughs> yeah. so, that's so important. And it's so special to hear that kind of perspective. So thank you. Yeah, um, it's, it's what we do. Let's uh, let's get into a couple of the questions that Destiny and I have prepared. Um, so something that I wanted to ask, how did Geek Therapeutics start? Like, because for me, I think, especially growing up, uh, there was a lot of stigma around geek culture and video games. And like, um, you know, I've, I've been to therapy. I, I struggle with, you know, depression and anxiety myself. And this idea of using, you know, geek fandom in a positive way, especially when there's so much negativity online, I think is really interesting. So I kind of wanted to ask, like, how did all of this start and how do you work around that stigma? Oh boy. So it has, I'm a lifelong gamer, video gamer. Our, it, like if we, if we went and put our, our like geek cultural stuff on like a, a fun, like uh, octagon type style, like <laughs> video games are hands down the top for me. Then it goes into like D and D anime and LARPing and things like that. And then down at the bottom, it's probably like fan fiction. Um, <laughs> that's, that's kind of the, the, the way that it kind of goes. Uh, because when I write, I write for, for books or other things, uh, instead of for how do I solve this problem? They're like, no, I can just think through that one. Um, right. and the, <laughs> the biggest thing that I think that where this came from is since all of, I've been doing, uh, playing the, in these different cultural artifacts for so long, for so many parts of my life, we've heavily gone and, and utilized them in a, a manner to, to understand ourselves and our relationship with the world and the other, what we call it, um, outside of us as well. 
So in right around is really about 2006, 2008 is when I actually, my undergrad started doing a dance dance revolution club. I started it at my campus and we started with 11 people. And by the time I left two years later to go to my master's program, we had blossomed to a wholesome 256, wow. which is incredible for two, yeah. two years. Yeah. We had five yeah. different um, video game consoles that were running a uh, dance dance revolution across the campus and so last i heard it was still going strong and there was a lot of a lot of people like why are people doing this and we're like because it's exercise <laughs> it's community yeah. it's a whole bunch of other things and so that that kind of like sparked the idea of how can we utilize these uh, these ideas these different cultural artifacts as as a community-based operation, as a way to kind of engage ourselves about the world around us, but also our own internal interests of that. And then going through master's program, doctoral, I've always used them in my clinical settings. And so it, even with people who aren't video gamers, who have never done this, we can even pull the the idea of what we would call uh, mythology or uh, different essays on, on different uh, characteristics of, of different mythological characters and we can utilize that in a therapeutic context and then that leads us into a wonderful gateway of actually working with uh video gamers in a capacity that or non-video gamers as well in a capacity that very much feels like they're getting something out of it and as long as you feel like you're making some sort of change you're doing something you're learning a little bit more about yourselves that's really where it comes into play. And so throughout all my uh, internships, practicums, everything like that, I've been using this mm -hmm. probably what are we into that 2021. So yeah, I've been using this for over, over 10 years now. Um, and in some format or things like that. And so what ended up happening is after I graduated and got licensed very quickly, we're like uh, being ha uh, attacked is the word I'm going to use of um, inundated was the one that the last reporter was <laughs> talking to me about. <laughs> Um, he's like, attacked is too strong of a word. And I was like, no, man, it really feels like a word attacked. He goes, well, I'm going to use the word inundated. I was like, you can use that one too. That's fine. <laughs> That'll, that gets the same premise, not as, not right. as, not as <laughs> right. standoffish. Uh, but we, we basically uh, have just been like inundated with requests to do trainings everywhere across the world. Um, I've done trainings for in Russia. I've done trainings in the UK, here and all across the United States, Canada, pretty much everywhere. Um, that psychology is, is really interested in these types of ideas. So w what ended up happening is we started getting like requests about like two to three times a week. Like, hey, can you do this training? We're like, we are only one people. We're only one <laughs> person. Like we want to help right. out. We can't do this, uh, but we can't keep going at this pace. We're going to burn out and we're going to have a lot of difficulties. And so what we ended up doing was let's start a company. Let's get these, uh, all these information uh, ideas out there and that's where it was kind of born. That's where we formulated the company um, around the ideas that we've been using for over a decade. And that's how Geek Therapeutics was, was born. And we started off small with just doing one CE uh, a month. And now we're doing three a month. We have a therapeutic game master program that runs two new cohorts every month for nine weeks straight. We have more programs that are going to be coming out later this year. The Kickstarter that I've already talked about. I mean, next year we're going to do a really amazing mindfulness course certification. It just keeps on going and people are, are loving it, which is what we want. And we're asking them like, what do you guys want to see? How do you want to do this? And so this year we, we got a lot of requests for like, we want more D and D we want more role-playing games. We want more of that stuff. And I'm like, cool. Mm -hmm. We made it happen out of the 36 trainings that we're doing. I'm pretty sure about 26 of them are just on TTRPGs or RPGs in some form. Wow. Nice. Yeah, that's this year. And then next year, we, we're going very heavy into video games. And so we, we have some of the big names in video game research coming on in to do some trainings, in, but also uh, engage us in, in some different ways and some different ideas of, of what, how can we look at these ideas? How can we look at these concepts differently? Um, Anyone who knows knows me knows that I'm very pro gaming. Uh, we have a survey running out, and if you take it, you'll you'll completely think the opposite of that. We're we're not pro gaming at all because we're what we're trying to do <laughs> is is find see whether there is um, the idea of gaming disorder because it's coming out. There's no way to stop it at this point. Right. It's coming out yeah. in the spring. Um, is it linked to mental health? And if it's linked to mental health, let's do what we call logistical regression, where um, in research, what that's called is we take all the factors and we see what came first. What is the predisposition to this? And when we do that, we can then say, cool, is it mental health or is it gaming? 
I will tell you any mm-hmm. of the cl- clients that I tend to work with and the clinicians that I work with, we're all on the side of it's, it's mental health and they're using right. gaming as a coping mechanism because games are social avenues. Right. Games are social um, entities. Mm-hmm. And then that's, it's a way that people feel safe in order to do that. That's what we're hoping comes out of it, but we're also going to see what the research likes to do. It's, there hasn't been one done like this uh, before. So we're, we're hopeful that it's going to really give us a lot of, of positive inf- information, but it's also going to be one of the driving factors to really fight against gaming this week. That's good. Oh, it's so incredible. It's so, just like, go ahead, Dee. No, no, no. Go ahead, Matt. Give no, me I all just, the compliments. Yeah, I go. just think it's like, <laughs> you know, as, as someone who's, who's struggled with mental health for quite a long time and, you know, um, using it in such a productive way is just incredible because, you know, when all this stuff started about, uh, you know, gaming disorder, it's, there's something more going on there. And I feel like this is just something that's kind of being slapped on to cover a problem that, you know, people are trying to misidentify. I just, yeah. kudos to you guys. It's incredible what you're doing. And now hands down, in- hands down agreeing with you. Yeah. yeah. We, we, we think that it's, it's not a, we're, we're actually going to be launching a problematic uh, gaming certificate program, which is going to go and say very much in middle being like, look, we understand games are social. We understand mm-hmm. that all these things are, are really good stuff. This is what gaming disorder is. We prefer to call it kind of problematic gaming because gaming disorder says that there's something wrong with it. And we'd say like problematic gaming means that we kind of need something there. Now that is not to say that there are definitely just like with depression and anxiety, there's people who are crippled by it um, in their everyday life. We're not saying that that's not potentially possible for um, for uh, the gaming community. Like there's probably some people out there that are what we would consider to be addictive to, to video games, but gaming disorder and everything that everyone's doing is not what is actually what's happening. Right. That's not like the greatest itself. way to, to, to do that. Yeah. yeah it's, what it's, it's doing is it problem, over pathologizes right. it, right. It, it, it's not the problem. It, it over pathologizes what we do for pleasure, for fun and stuff. So it, it increases the percentage. Like some people have said like 50% of gamers are, are addictive. That's, that's a bunch of bull. Um, mm-hmm. that there's no way in the world, like depression is, is between six and 8% of the whole world's, uh, wide. You're going to say that 50% of the world's population is addicted to video games. Give me a break. We don't have a yeah. disorder that is that high. I would say we're probably closer to like, you know, a 0.5, 0.8% of it, which still equals, you know, like a billion people or sure, something yeah. like that, but it's a lot of people, but comparable to what we all do. And I mean, if you saw it's right not, here, it's I definitely am, not half all world. my systems. Right. Yeah. Oh, God, no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, no. <laughs> but I mean, I get it. I think like yeah. back in the 90s, I remember like there was the same issue with like, okay, so I love Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And I remember. Oh, so good. Who's your yeah, favorite? Yeah, it's so good. Raphael. <laughs> yeah, the best yes. one. Thank the best you. one. Tough That's exterior, my... heart of gold. Right. I'll beat you. With, I had with like my little the biggest guys. crush on him after I saw him in the first like movie where he was the only one who cursed. And I was like, he's so mm-hmm. cool. He's like, he's <laughs> the coolest. He's my favorite. <laughs> so like, I remember like when um, they were trying to say like, we shouldn't have like violence in cartoons because like it was making children violent and all of these things. And I feel like it's kind of like led over to video games because um, it, it seems like a cycle of things that we're trying to blame on different things instead of just accepting that like people may have things that they're struggling with and it the the movies the games it's not making people violent like they may have already had some kind of violent tendencies like you know so I think that's great that we're like really delving into that and looking for that information because I for one definitely yeah. don't think like playing a game would make you a murderer or <laughs> like anything yeah. like that you know it it, it won't yeah, we're, exactly. we're in a complete agreement with that. Like the research that I've done, again, logistical reg- regression for people who want to look up that one, actually shows that your predisposition to being more violent is more indicative of you becoming violent after playing a game than the game itself. So the game isn't even used as a medium. Right? It's your mm-hmm. own personal structure. You already have like those your, urges, right? So that's yeah. why you play those games, right? So mm-hmm. I, I think I remember reading something a long time ago that says like, games like people who play violent games i'm not sure if this like still stands true today but people who play violent games are like basically uh releasing those urges in a more productive way instead of like acting out on some of those things so they're able to do it in video games i'm not saying that all people do that but that was kind of the study that i read about but um i had a question catharsis thank you (laughs) 
So I had a question because I um, was listening to you and I know you were talking about training people who are like already in the field. What can someone like myself and Matt do if we want to be a, a bigger help with with all of this? Because I definitely want to like get in there and do my part Um, Because I think it's an important thing and we always talk about it. It's one of our core topics is, you know, just to um, use our platform to give a voice when it comes to mental health. Because I think like in today's society, we all can benefit from knowing that there are places that we can go to just to talk to someone or anything like that. And I know... Mm -hmm. Personally, and like the black community, it's kind of taboo to, to say that you're mm-hmm. dealing with depression or that, you know, because I remember growing up, I used to have bad anxiety and my dad would just be like, oh, you're just having a bad day. Right. And it's just like this cycle. Completely so just, like suck it up. Buttercup, yeah. Like right? it's, it'll you're be like, fine. Come on. I'll go get you some food. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the food helped, but the point is, I definitely think like, um, this is a great way um, to do this. So I want to know what I can do. And I'm sure Matt wants to know what he can do to help with any of this other than just having you come on the show as many times as you want to talk about it. (laughs) But um, yeah. I mean, one of the best things that we we actually do is when when someone goes through our cultural competency, they understand what gay culture is, everything like that. That's twelve hours of of continuing education credits. Uh, they they get put up on our website actually underneath our therapist locator as a culturally competent, and then as they get certified, they get moved over to the uh, certified geek therapist um, as well. And so that kind of helps drive a lot of a lot of people, and that's growing every week. We we have I think close to a hundred. 120 people that are in the program right now. So over this next year, we're going to see a massive blossom of certified geek therapists in wow. a lot of people that are going to be able to find find the need. I, I usually get hit up on our Facebook messenger probably about three times a week and being like, how, who, how can I find someone? How can I do this? And I'm like, where are you located? Here's our website. Um, look on this first. If you can't find someone, let me know. Let me know your general area, your state where you're at. And I'm going to go and try to help you find someone that I, I would trust in that mm-hmm. area. And so that's a that's a really big thing of what we always try to do. We, we also partner with Guardians Mental Health. If you guys have heard of them, I would de- if not, then I would mm-hmm. definitely check them out. They're super, super nice. Um, and Joe uh, Telesk is the the CEO of that one. And he is a, he's a fantastic guy. Um, they, they run a peer support program um, through their Discord. And it is one of the ones that they actually have uh, peer support specialists uh, that go and know how to deal with some mental health symptoms. And it's not therapy, but it's there as a peer support team to be able to, to help out in a lot of different ways. So if people are like, I need someone like now to just kind of like help me through this moment, that peer support's a really good mm-hmm. uh, place to start. If they need something a little bit more long-term, I would definitely check out who is a cultural competency holder, who is someone that is going to know the culture and know what they're doing. That's there. For you guys as teachers, you uh, we actually have people who go through our uh, therapeutic game master program um, and are using it in schools, and they are finding it to be massively beneficial for their students um, when, when they kind of uh, frame it a different way. And, and that has been very, I would say, beneficial for for them. We have pastors taking it. We have social workers. We it's everything. And I think that's one of the things that actually separates us is that we're, we're actually. Um, approved by APA for psychologists, NBCC for master's level clinicians, and ACE for social workers. They have seen our programs, they've seen our CEs, and they say, this meets our criteria that you can give out continuing education units to people in this stuff. There's no one else that has that. And that's that's what kind of, I think, separates us uh, from what we're, what we're doing. Uh, we also love people to get involved with the, the community in any way. I mean, we just did a geek trivia night uh, for PAX last week, which was nice. fun, uh, <laughs> to, be, awesome. to say the least. Yeah, but we we love doing um, certain uh-huh. things, meeting with the community and seeing what we can do to also support other people in, in their own missions, in their own endeavors. I know that um, I recently talked to, I think I mentioned that we were going to be talking to you and she knew of you. And I'm going to butcher her last name. I don't want to say it because I'm going to say it wrong. But she's part of, she basically runs um, uh, Take This, which is um, um, kind of like a community that's like supporting mental Mm -hmm. health within the game industry. And her name's Eve. And her last name is- Eve Crenshaw. Yes. Thank you. Because I I was afraid, because it's spelled like C-R-E-V-O-S-H-A, Crevice. 
I don't yep. know if I'm saying that right. <laughs> but yeah, so like she's going to be coming on our show as well. And I remember like talking to her a little bit about like having you on. And she's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know him. And I was like, yeah, we're really <laughs> excited. I, to I know Eve. I actually have her cell phone number. She's a wonderful she is, soul. She is yeah. beautiful. She's amazing. And I had a meeting I love with talking her a couple her. of she's, days ago. She's great. She, yeah, she's fantastic <laughs> to, to talk with. And she has such amazing ideas. Yeah, so um, hopefully, because our podcast is like focusing on mental health, like we can bring more people onto our show just to give um, more advice and things like mm-hmm. that. So I know we're kind of like almost running out of time. But one of the things that we always ask our guests is uh, basically just to can you once again give your information on where people can find you, your website and things like that? And we'll definitely, everybody who's listening, we will post all that information down below as well so that you can find it. Because I I, I think what you're doing is amazing. Honestly, I'm probably going to use we, it too. And we love what we do. Like that, That's the biggest thing is we all work full-time jobs. This is a side gig for us and a side thing for us to, to do. And mm-hmm. We love doing it. And I think that that speaks um, to, to everyone else who does these trainings with us right. and everything and everything else that we're, we're doing. Like we, we're making a difference. People are finding these uh, massive value in a lot of these different ideas. And so if people want to get in touch with us, they can find us on, uh, we're on all social media. You just search for at Geek Therapeutic or Geek Therapeutics, depending on if you're on Twitter and you only have 15 spaces, you can do stuff. <laughs> um, the, uh, but the easiest way is just search the, the web for Geek Therapeutics, and you'll find us. We're on Facebook. Our website's geektherapeutics.com. Uh, we do the Therapeutic Dungeon Master uh, Game Master program through therapeuticgamemaster.com. We mm-hmm. are very active in all social media. Our our subscriptions are are up there for for people if they want. There's one for if you just want to watch the videos, you don't want to see ease. That's the heroic. We have legendary and mythic, depending on kind of what what people want to do, and they can very easily get in touch if you integrate if you integrate and interact with uh, the chat bot and something like that. You usually get me. So I'm the one who's usually manning that <laughs> um, because it's it's a long time, and all of us have to do a lot of stuff, and so we take turns. <laughs> nice. And also, guys, just stay tuned because, as he said, they are starting their Kickstarter soon. And if you believe in this, then definitely support them because I know that we need someone who's on our side as geeks and nerds and gamers. And they seem like the fact that you do it out of love, like you can tell. You can really tell. And I think that's fantastic. And I really, lives. really hope that you'll come back and join us in the future because I feel like we, I feel like we just scratched the surface tonight. This was not enough tonight. time. No, yeah. not at all. So <laughs> we, I hope you'll come back and join we us. We haven't in the even scratched because... the surface. There's <laughs> so much more we can do. Yeah, please that's what I mean. Back. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So please, please come back and join us because I think what you're doing, like Destiny said, is so incredible and so is so important. Um, and I just kudos to you guys because I, I am just completely enamored with everything that you're doing. So thank you for doing it. And, and please come tell us more because I'm I'm dying to hear more about it. Yeah. And thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule, honestly, yeah. to like come on and talk to us and for the future because you're coming back. We both love Rob. <laughs> you're coming back. We, 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 anytime you guys want it and anytime you want any of the other uh, people, trainers yes. or anything like that, I'm happy to to say like, hey, these, these people want to to interview about how you're using geek therapy um, in, in your practice and how you're doing that. I have a slew of people who'd be like, yeah, let's do this. Let's talk about this. Let's, let's engage this way. I love it. Amazing. So please, please, please make sure you go check out Geek Therapeutics. All the links will be in the description below. Make sure you go support and you better go check out the Kickstarter when it goes live in September because I know I'm going to and I know Destiny will too. So please go support Dr. Anthony Bean and and the incredible organization that he's working with. I love your name, by the way. Yeah, so good. Just Dr. Bean. I was like, that's so cute. Yeah, it's the best. And and like Mr. Bean, like my favorite one, just so we're all know, (laughs) is the one when he gets the turkey Turkey. stuff on his head. Yeah. And And he's like, and you, you just look at him, you're like, this is the most ridiculous thing in the world, and I love it. Yeah. How did, how did he not get one. salmonella from that? Oh, right? <laughs> right? It's it's Mr. Bean. He's just something else. Uh, like they had to have, like, a snorkel or something. <laughs> right? I know. They just had, like, a hole cut out the back just for just so he could <laughs> breathe properly. He kept switching the turkey depending on the direction. Um, Dr. Bean, thank you again. It was an absolute pleasure talking to you. And uh, I wish you all the best in the future. And I mean, we'll talk to you again soon enough. So I mean, yeah. we'll talk soon. Thank um, you so much. That brings us to the end of the show. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you guys on the next one. For Team Burnout, peace out.
Deuces!